We are steaming ahead towards a rematch of the 2020 election. But whether we will actually see President Biden and former President Donald Trump go head to head in a debate, that's still unknown. Former President Trump made it very clear he is ready to get on that debate stage. You can see we have an empty podium right here to my right. You know what that is? That's for Joe Biden. I'm trying to get him to debate. I'm calling on Crooked Joe to debate anytime, any place. We'll do it anywhere you want, Joe, so that we can discuss in a friendly manner the real problems of our country. Already trolling with the empty podium. And that's exactly what debates are for. So voters can hear the candidates' vision for the country, their solutions to the nation's current problems. Presidential debates go back as far as Abraham Lincoln. And with a few exceptions here and there, they are an American tradition. But now, since Trump says he's eager to debate Biden, the liberal media is suddenly down on them. MSNBC out with this piece, Trump's preoccupation with debating Biden reaches a new level. Donald Trump is desperate to participate in presidential debates. Joe Biden would be justified in turning him down. Hmm. And the media mocked him. He, tonight at the rally, set up a podium and called for debates with Joe Biden. What are the chances that he actually does that? Well, he was smart. It was smart politics to be the first one to ask for it because he gets to Does look tough. Does that commit him, though? I to don't think doing so. It? He I can mean... get out of it any which way. I think he wants to look like the tough guy who wants to debate, but he has he has a lot of flexibility to get out of it. Last night, Trump held a rally in Wisconsin and to taunt President Biden for not committing to a debate, uh, Trump had an empty podium on the stage that said, "Anytime, anywhere, any place." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Trump said he'll debate anytime, anywhere, any place. Biden was like, tell me you're unemployed without telling me you're unemployed. Charles, it feels like the media is setting the stage for Biden not to debate if he so chooses. Yeah, what a surprise. Circling the wagons yet again, although it just gets harder and harder. You know, you, when you did the intro, you talked about this being an American um, tradition. I want to read something here um, because, you know, a lot of times when these things come up, and of course I lost it, <laughs> it's a, a Google debate. In democracy. Just, you know, let's see where it goes. So debate is the bedrock of democracy in any culture or political system, any culture or political system. It is a foundational part of freedom of expression, which is itself recognized worldwide as a basic human right. This is published in the UK. Yeah. Think it about that. I mean, so for them to mock this is stupid. This is what it's, it's what it's what we are all about. Right. It's the ethos of America. Uh, and, and we, the American public wants it, and I think it should be a demerit against President Biden if he doesn't go through with it. So you say the American people want it. Well, yeah. we, we have proof of that, and let's pull it up. Harris, take a look at this. This is our Fox News poll. This was conducted just about mid-March, and what you'll find is 64% of Americans say it's extremely or very important to have a debate. Just 16% say not at all. And then when you flip over to is it a sign of weakness or strength if you do not debate, 72% say, a sign of weakness. I mean, wow. that's pretty unmistakable. Yeah, and that hurts Biden because even Democrats today on the Israel-Hamas war are telling him that he looks weak for how he's handling things. So that, that, that is particularly prickly for him. I, I want to say this, though. Neither man really put themselves in the best place to argue this. Neither one of them debated going into the primary season. And then at the front of the primary season, no, Trump said no, Biden said no. Biden, I think, underestimated RFK Jr. He probably should have debated him before the world realized that, wow, that really matters. Mm. I mean, it could have just been an also ran. Now it counts. So this is a problem for both. And I, I do, I, I always find it funny when Trump does, does that. He did that to Nancy Pelosi when she didn't show up to the White House. Remember that? And Chuck Schumer. And, <laughs> That's right. And there was like the empty yeah. chair. And I, it does show, are you part of the conversation or not? But if he's really serious about this, he needs to work to get some dates on the calendar and have Biden say, no, I'm not showing up. Mm. And say, you know, uh, say, look, I didn't debate going into primary season, didn't think either one of us had to, but this is necessary to Charles's point. It's what the American people expect. And 72% of people are going to think you, you're weak for not doing it. I think Trump can work that. And, and Trump has said, Emily, very smartly setting the stage for this, I'll debate you anytime, any place, let anyone run the thing, I will be there. But I want you to listen to what the Biden campaign, Biden White House has said. And I want to put a little disclaimer. This is Ron Klain, his former chief of staff, and what you're about to watch. We'll have those conversations. Uh, but right now, uh, our focus is on making sure we continue to build out a campaign and infrastructure that's going to be able to be competitive in 2024. 
So that's a no. You have not committed. No, I said that the campaign is going to take a look at the schedule and we can have this conversation. So I think it's really up to Donald Trump to make it clear he would he would agree to this mm -hmm. long-standing way which we've conducted presidential debates in this country. Uh, Joe Biden's certainly happy to debate Donald Trump. Uh, he did it last time. It went very well for the president. The current president went poor, poorly for the former president. And uh, But, you know, I think we have to know that Trump would agree to the right set of the, the basic structures that his predecessors have agreed to, and then he'll actually follow the rules this time. Will you commit to a debate with former President Trump? It depends on his behavior. They're setting the stage with a lot of caveats. A lot of caveats that, to me, show that they're afraid of something. If you're the President of the United States and you are invited to, although I don't like that word because you are right, this is, this is, part, of, it is part of the fabric of democracy. It's the House of Burgesses. You know, we all go there when we're 12 years old. We take our trips to D.C., in, or at least in my public school district, we did, and we learn how debate is what enabled the Founding Fathers to have the best ideas, the most noble ideas, the most free-thinking ideas that were agreed upon to create our Constitution that came out of debate, stirring, rousing, respectful debate. And so take away that term, invited, the fact that our president is like, well, only if he agrees. What are you afraid of, sir? Why are you not... Only if he plays well, nice. Why aren't you... <laughs> right? Why aren't you only if he's not today? mean to me. Right. Only if he's not tough. Right, right. <laughs> and that's why, for example, the Boston Globe put out an opinion ed, an opinion op-ed saying, well, only if the moderator has control of the mic. Maybe that would be a good thing. I mean, at the end of the day, let the American people decide yes. whose behavior yeah. shapes their, their formation. Quick final point. Remember when President Biden said that he would take President Trump behind the bleachers? and the media celebrated it. Mm -hmm. Why is it that when we have one man who advocates for violence that is celebrated in this mainstream media, and when that same man refuses to engage in respectful discourse, as that president is calling for a part of our American history, a fabric of our society, our government, that is somehow downplayed, ignored, and he's given a free pass on it. Kennedy, you know, Trump is going to keep up this drumbeat, the empty podium. It should be at every rally, I maintain. But does it work? Does it force Biden into the ring? It makes Biden look like a coward. And, you know, to Emily's point, he has an obligation to debate. Voters need to have all the facts at hand. He has an obligation. He is an absolute coward here. And he looks worse and worse the more the media covers for him. To Harris's point... I wish we would have seen both these candidates debate in the primaries. I do think that debate makes you a stronger candidate. And if Joe Biden, his propaganda say he has the strongest record of any president in modern history, if that's the case, then stand on that stage and defend it. If you are proud of your record, if you think your way of life and your political philosophy is better than that of your opponent, then stand up to him and challenge his. He can't do that because he doesn't believe in it. And this administration doesn't want to be challenged. They want to press the press to run cover for them. If Trump were the one who said that he wouldn't commit to the debating Joe Biden for the general election, the Trump, the anti-Trump media would be losing their minds right now. They would be literally birthing kittens in newsrooms. <laughs> and, and that shows the utter hypocrisy with how they cover uh, this president. I will say just, I mean, one caveat is I think it would be political malpractice to let Joe Biden anywhere near a campaign stage, a debate stage across from Donald Trump. So I don't know. If I'm on his campaign, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't let him on that podium. But here we go. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.